Alright, so let me talk about fundamentals and how you can actually view this fundamental news in five minutes, okay? So just listen to me, right? So usually in fundamentals, there are three numbers to remember, right? Three numbers to remember in fundamentals. Whenever what you watch the market, you have to focus on three numbers, which are these numbers, right? So first, you have the uh, previous, we have previous, and also we have consensus, and we have actual. Previous is like uh, the previous month result. You don't have to you know, remember all these percentage or these numbers, but somehow, right, somehow, in this news, the previous was, hold on, let me delete this uh, chat box again, all right? So previous, when you look at it, was 55.5, right? Last month, it was 50.5, the result on this news. And consensus is 54.9, right? This is the market expectation, right? The market expects this time, right, in five minutes, the news is going to be worse than the previous, right? And that's the market expectation, all right? And then we're waiting for the actual to come in five minutes. And if it ends up with worse than the consensus and worse than the previous, then US dollar is going to be sold. But if the actual is going to be better than the previous and better than the consensus, then it's going to be bold, right? US dollar is going to be bold. And as a result, Euro dollar is going to go down. So again, we have three news, right? Uh, three numbers to remember when you, whenever you look at the news, which are previous and consensus and actual. Previous is the previous number, right? Usually last month number, and it was 50.5 somehow, right? And this time, there's a consensus in the market expectation, right? The market expects it's going to be worse than the previous. It's going to be 54.9. We are waiting for the actual to come in about three minutes. And if it ends up, end up with uh, worse, then US dollar is going to be sold. If it's going to be positive, then US dollar is going to be bought. So we will keep watching this market uh, based on the euro dollar that we are looking at right now. And we will compare the result uh, with this uh, actual chart and see how it plays out. So yeah, even if you don't know what the news is, what the news is all about, you can just focus on these three numbers. And when it's worse, then it's going to be sold. When it's better, then it's going to be bought, right? Basically, that's it. Basically, that's a rule. Sometimes there are uh, different situations, but basically this is the fundamentals of fundamentals. <laughs> So we'll see. We'll see in about uh, two minutes here. What is the application to use? Uh, you use uh, to look for the news. This is uh, fxstreet.com. Is the one that I'm looking at right now. Okay. When you have time, can you talk about CIS as well? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> okay, CIS. How do you know CIS? Is is he famous in the world too? I read from uh, the Japan Times. Oh, okay, okay. The news that he says, mystery man who boasts he can shift the Nikkei with a single tweet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He says Nikkei is his wallet, right? He says Nikkei is my wallet. That's his proverb. <laughs> CIS. He's a great trader too. And he's still, he is still active trader right now. All right. So there's outcome. Uh, the outcome was great. The actual was 57.3. So it was better than the previous, way better than the previous, and also way better than the consensus. So US dollar is going to be bought as a result and see what's happening right now on the Euro data right now. All right, so here's a chart again. Okay, so let's take, take a look at the five minute chart. Yeah, it spiked downwards, but not as much as I thought. Yeah, it was spiking down, but uh, it doesn't really move right it doesn't really move in this five minute chart so it looks like the market does not react that much in this uh, euro data right um, let's check out the currency strength chart and see how it reacted all right i will just click on today okay so usd is the orange one and it looks like it doesn't really move that much and i guess we have to wait for a couple more seconds to be reflected on this one but basically, in this case, US dollar is going to be bought, right? US dollar is going to be bought in general. So let's check out another currency. Let's check out the USDJPY. All right, so it's not really bought as much as I thought. So it looks like the market is not really reacting to that, uh, mark, uh, to that news, right? 
So sometimes it happens, or sometimes it happens. In general, when the turnout is positive, then US dollar should be bought, and when the turnout is negative, then US dollar should be sold. But right now, as you can see it here, it doesn't react, right? It doesn't react within the market. Yeah, it didn't really impact the market. But um, sometimes, right, sometimes what's happening is that it doesn't react the market uh, at, at that time, but over time, right, after one hour or two hours later, it might react and it might gradually moving downwards, right? Sometimes that happens too. So as a result, basically we can still think that this is US dollar is bought, right? US dollar is bought. So Euro dollar is going to be gradually moving down. We can expect like that based on the fundamentals here. And actually that goes along with this weekly chart trend direction. So I will be keep looking for the sell chance on the Euro dollar. So it didn't really react to the news. I was expecting that the market is going to react to that news and I will be watching the epic momentum of spiking up and down as a result of the news but looks like it's not really reacting this time unfortunately fortunately or unfortunately i'm not sure <laughs> so anyways right uh, coming back to the topic here so daily chart it was right it was it, it is still going down right the price action is going down because the highs are getting lower and the lows are getting lower too but when you look at the Ichimoku Kumo here, it's shrinking down. So it's losing its momentum, right? Senko Span B is completely flat and the market is actually twisting backwards. So we have to wait for the confirmations for this price to be going down this way. And in the daily chart, uh, we cannot really tell that from this Ichimoku Kinko Hyo or Bologna Bands either. So basically in this daily chart, we cannot really think about selling it. The really important news for USD is on Friday, non-farm. Yeah, exactly. Non-farm is going to impact the market. Yeah, yeah. So we have to watch out for that. So Canadian dollar just spikes sharply down. Okay. Canadian down a lot. Okay. Okay. So let me just take a look at the Canadian real quick because I have that on the list. Okay. CADJPY, one hour chart. Yeah, it's moving down. Five minute chart. Yeah, it's spiking down. So coming back to this fundamentals of Canadian dollar, uh, when you look at it here, it was negative, right? It was negative. It was uh, 1.25 actual, worse than the previous and worse than the consensus, right? So they cut rate, right? They cut rate 1.25. So that's why Canadian dollar and CADJPY was going down. And also CAD USD should be going down too. Yeah, yeah. So this is usually what's happening based on the fundamentals. Whenever you see the negative news, negative outcome uh, of those news, that currency should be sold, right? And this is the great example on this Canadian dollar. So coming back to your dollar. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the, uh, hold on, the next time frame. So, okay, on this four hour chart, and four hour chart looks to be uptrend, right? This is uptrend after the twist uppers, right? The Kumo is moving up and the price has been moving up too. It's been actually above this Tenkan Sen, right? The price has been above this Tenkan Sen here, has been supported a couple of times. So we can see that the Tenkan Sen has been working as a support. So it was really remarkable when the price broke the Tenkan Sen downwards here, right? This was something new. And this is actually the change in the market because this never happened in the past, right? On this bullish trend, it was always supported by this Tenkan Sen, but this time, right, just earlier, uh, about eight hours ago, it just broke this um, Tenkan Sen downwards here. So it was pretty remarkable. And yeah, maybe because it was resisted by this weekly descending trend line downwards. But, anyways, right, it's going down now. Maybe, right, uh, it keeps going down this way or it might retrace sometimes or at some point and it might bounce back up this way. We never know. We never know. Based on the weekly chart, it's going down. So I will be looking for the sell in this case, right? But in this 4-hour chart, there's no clue to sell, right? There's no clue to sell because basically it's uh, moving up still. So right now it's touching this uh, moving average uh, 20 midline of this uh, Bollinger Band, right, it's touching here. 
So let's see if the market is going to react to this uh, SMA20. And it goes or it breaks it down and goes all the way to Kijun Sen here. We will see on that. So in a 4 hour chart, basically this is uptrend. So it's against the weekly and daily chart, as we can see. Alright, and let's check out the 1 hour chart. Alright, in this 1 hour chart, right, the story is a little bit different here. Right, the story is a little bit different. Uh, previously, it was going up, right, it was going up this way. But now look at the market. Uh, right now, right, uh, the market after the market marked this pin bar as a result of the rate cut uh, on the US last, uh, last night yesterday. After here, the market did not renew the recent high, but it's actually going down, right? And looking like this is like a head and shoulders pattern in one hour chart. And on euro dollar particularly, uh, head and shoulder patterns or double bottom, double top is likely to be seen in this currency pair. So this is something that we can trust on this uh, head and shoulder patterns. And we can expect the price will be keep going down this way, right? And Kumo just twisted uh, to bearish. And right now the price did not renew the recent high uppers and now it's going down, right? So in this case, I will wait and see if the price is going to break this recent high downwards, uh, sorry, recent low downwards. And if it does, then I will be starting to looking for the sell from here. But until it breaks it downwards, I will just wait, right? Because it might consolidate here within this range. But right now, right again, because the market did not renew the recent high uppers, this is becoming into the range. Basically, this is in the range. And if the price breaks the recent low downwards this way, and this is going to be the beginning of the downtrend from here in one hour chart because the low is now renewing, right? The low is renewing. The highs are getting lower and lower too. So this is the downtrend, right? From here. Yeah, basically, uh, if the price is going to break this support line downwards or not is the topic here. If it does, then this is going to be the head and shoulders patterns as a result and the price is going to go down. But if it's going to be supported here, right, and if it renews the recent high uppers even, then I will switch my view to buy, right? I will switch my view to buy after the renewal of this uh, recent high uppers. But my view, right, my expectation is the price to be breaking the support line downwards. And this is something that I'm expecting right now. All right, so we'll see on that. All right, so one hour chart, this is uh, basically, I just put this is in the range, right? Because Kumo is horizontal, just twisted, and the market does not renew the recent high uppers, nor it breaks the recent low downwards. So basically, this is in the range to me, unless it breaks it downwards. It's still in the range to me, okay? So to place a sell, right? In this case, weekly chart is mov moving down. I will wait for one hour to confirm its downtrend. I will just wait for one hour to be moving down this way, which means the price will be breaking this you know, recent support downwards. Then I will even go to lower time frames like 15 or 5 and capture the trading edge to sell. So at this time, for this time right now, I will just wait for the confirmation of the breakout to the downside. Yeah, I'm not sure. If it's moving up, then it should be uptrend. But you have to have the confirmation or, or any signals, bearishness, to confirm. So is it clear, everyone, so far? So again, I am looking at this one hour chart in Euro data, and I will be looking for the chance to sell, right? After the breakout of this recent low downwards and Chikospan breakout too, right? Chikospan should be breaking this um, candlestick downwards too, right? The recent low downwards. And then I will be looking for the sell by looking at even the lower time frames in the same manner. So right now, again, Kumo is twisted to the bearish Kumo. And also, uh, Tenkan Sen has been completely flat. Tenkan Sen has been completely flat here. So basically, it, shows, it also shows that this is in the range, right? What I can also look at is um, Kijun Sen to be pointing downwards to place a sell, right? Right now, it's horizontal, so we cannot really be positive to sell, right? Can you use uh, Bollinger Band as a signal for sell position? Yeah. Well, actually, in this case, right, this is still an uptrend. Well, technically, this is in a range. So we cannot really trust this Bollinger Band because uh, whenever it's moving up or down, 
this squeeze can be trustable, right? Whenever it's moving up, uh, you can actually look for the buy chance on this squeeze, right? On the Bollinger Band squeeze at here or here. But right now, this is in a range, right? In, uh, in the theory, this is in a range. So we cannot really trust this squeeze to sell. We cannot really trust this one, right? This is not the squeeze that we're looking for. These ones are okay. These ones are okay, but not this one, not this squeeze. Because this is in a range now. Yeah, I'm not sure if the breakout is gonna happen in, uh, today or not. But I will just keep watching the market and whenever it breaks out, then I will look for the sell by looking at the lower time frames. Um, or sometimes I, what I usually do is even before the breakout, sometimes I take sell, right, by looking at the price to be not making the recent high uppers, but uh, you know it pulls back here, right. And when you see this kind of price action, sometimes I take a sell, right. I draw a trend line like this way, and I place a sell sometimes here, because in this case the stop loss is going to be very tight. First of all. And so that means this is the trading edge to sell and I can expect the price to be breaking this one downwards and if it happens then this is going to be a great risk to reward ratio in this case. And if it goes upwards and if it cuts the stop loss, it's okay still because this stop loss is going to be very tight. So that means I have few risk to take sell here but I can expect the good reward when it breaks out. And that's why I call this is the selling edge on the market. And in that case, probably you can also draw lines like this, right? You can draw a uh, resistance line this way. And when it reacts to this resistant li resistance line as well as this uh, trend line, you can place sell, right? In this case, you don't look at the Kumo or you don't look at this Kijun Sen. You only look at its price action and take sell. But because this is in the range, right? We have a risk, right? We have a risk that the price might be going upwards from here. And by knowing that, sometimes I take sell because the risk to reward is going to be great.